Hello and welcome to another episode of the Top 3 Pen series. My name is Joost Appelbaum and every Monday we post a new video about the personal Top 3 Pens of famous pen people. If you don't want to miss out on a video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. This week we have the honor to see what the Top 3 Pens are of Joshua Denley. Joshua is the person behind the Pelican Perch, the main source for all your Pelican news. I highly recommend you to take a look at this blog after the video. Shall we have a look to see how enthusiastic Joshua is about his collection? Hello everyone, my name is Joshua Danley and I am the face behind the Pelican's Perch blog. It's not often you see me in front of the camera. The Pelican's Perch is a blog focused on uh, the Pelican brand of fountain pens. We, uh, as I mean I, do breaking news, uh, we, I review unique uh, models and do a lot of independently uh, researched uh, articles. Uh, before going any further, I'd like to thank Yoast for the opportunity to be included in this video series and I really find it an honor to be counted amongst many of the fountain pen personalities that have gone before. Uh, a little bit about myself, I live on the east coast of the United States in a suburb of Philadelphia. By day, I am a pulmonary and critical care physician, which means uh, my blogging happens in the uh, late evening and uh, early hours of the morning. A lot of times I'm surprised at how coherent the blog actually comes off. Uh, my fountain pen journey started in 2009. When I graduated medical school, my in-laws gave me my first fountain pen. Uh, it was a Waterman, it was a cartridge pen, and uh, I had no idea what I was doing, and that was readily evident as uh, I couldn't really make that pen work. And after a week or two, it ended up in a drawer and was kind of banished from memory as a, as a horrible experience. It was kind of serendipity um, several years later, I think it was in 2012, when an unsolicited flyer just kind of landed in the mail and it was from a pen shop out west. And I started looking through it and uh, a Lamy Safari, a yellow Lamy Safari caught my eye and so on a lark I, I ordered that pen. Um, the difference this time was I found the fountain pen network. Um, and I was able to educate myself, which really empowered me to understand pens better, their maintenance, their use, and uh, the second time around was uh, much uh, more successful. It wasn't long after that that I ordered a uh, Pilot Vanishing Point, and uh, from there kind of the bug took hold and I just started, you know, really exploring the fountain pen space. I started collecting all kinds of brands, different filling systems, different eras of production, shapes, sizes, and I really got an excellent education in the uh, breadth and depth of uh, what's out there in the fountain pen world. So it was probably around maybe 2013, 14 that I received my first Pelican. You know, I'm in the midst of collecting kind of everything, so Pelican was kind of on the list. And it was a white M205 that I picked up from Malaysia. And it was really love at first sight. It was a very classic appearing pen. It wrote very well. It had a beautiful balance when posted. It fit in the pocket wonderfully. And there was really little to not like. You know, I've always said Pelican pens transcend the sum of their parts and there's some intangible quality to them. And that really made me feel that. It wasn't long thereafter that I started seeking out additional Pelican pens. And since I'm not a man of in, you know, unlimited means, I, I needed to finance such an endeavor. And so a lot of those other pens I collected started getting to be you know, sold off. And ultimately, I found myself collecting exclusively Pelicans and sold off the other collection entirely. Except I still have that Lamy Safari and that Pilot Vanishing Point that kind of rekindled my journey. So I started researching my pens because I'm very interested in the history of them, the production history and all that good stuff, and found that there wasn't a lot out there um, in one kind of easy to find repository of information. They're a little bit here, a little bit there. And you know, I really felt like I wish there was somebody who put it all together for me. And that was really the inspiration behind the blog and you know why I do what I do. And it's been Hard to believe now, but it's been five years that I've, I've been blogging about Pelican. So to get to the heart of the matter, Yoast asked me to pick uh, three you know, of my personal favorite pens and um, you know, discuss those a little bit. 
It's a very unfair and loaded question because he's basically asking me to pick uh, three of my favorite children, and I just find that's just impossible. If you ask me tomorrow, I'd probably pick a different three. You know, it's so hard to, to narrow it down when there's been so many great models uh, to date. But I've done my best to, to honor his request. So as I started collecting, I initially started with the M200 line, the M150, M100. They were kind of the lower tier classic series, and at the time they were certainly much more affordable. So everyone has a grail, and my grail was a Toledo. Uh, the Toledos go back to the 1930s with the uh, T111. Uh, they're a sterling silver binda that has gold plating and this wonderful motif that is hand engraved. And it's just an incredibly classical, you know, sophisticated looking pen that just, you know, oozes quality. And it was something always to aspire to. And in 2015, I was lucky enough to actually find one um, from Italy. So this is an M700, a black M700 Toledo. And basically it comes to us um, as a very early production model. And the reason this is an early production model is because uh, it's one of the only pelicans to not have uh, the word pelican anywhere on it. Um, shortly thereafter the run, they would start engraving the uh, pelican name in West Germany on the end of the piston knob, but this one um, does not have that. This is a smooth piston knob. So this is one of the very first early Toledo's, uh, the M700 line to run off the production. Like I said, the motif is beautiful. There is this um, green ink window that really stands out when the pen's empty and, and looks beautiful when it's filled. Um, the nib is a uh, 18 karat nib, uh, fine in this case. And this is just an amazing pen to have in the pocket. I mean, literally, if you made me give up my entire collection and said I could only have one pen to remember it by, um, this M700 Toledo may be the one that I choose. Moving on, uh, the next would probably be the uh, M620 Piazza Navona. This is part of the City series that was uh, released in the 2000s, and this one comes to us from 2005. And this one honors a location in Rome. This one is uh, just beautiful with, in terms of the marbling, uh, the, the tans and the, the off-whites and the grays. It just has such a beautiful appearance. There's even some yellow in there. The barrel's translucent to allow for viewing um, the ink. And this has an 18 karat medium, medium nib. I mean, of all the M620 series, I mean, there's so many uh, beautiful models. Uh, you know, others that come to mind are the Athens, the Shanghai, um, my second favorite would be the San Francisco, uh, particularly when the light catches that one just right. Um, but you know, if I, if I had to pick one of those, uh, it's the Piazza Navona. And I picked up this one from Canada. Uh, I bought them as a, as a, as a group uh, in one shot, which was very fortunate for me because many people collect those for quite some time. For my third choice, I picked the Spirit of Gaudi. This is a pen that came out in 2002 um, on the 150th anniversary of the birth of Gaudi. Gaudi uh, was a modernist architect, quite famous uh, for his work. And uh, this pen uh, commemorates his work, La Pedrera, in Barcelona. And the gates of that uh, um, piece of architecture have this kind of interesting uh, pattern that you can see uh, overlaid on the barrel here. And what happens is, um, you know, this is a sterling silver overlay, and it's just a beautiful pen to look at. It's got a beautiful weight in the hand. Um, I think the black and the silver have a very classic um, look to it. There was only a thousand pieces of this one uh, released, and this one is number 478 out of a thousand. It's also the M800 size, which I've really come to enjoy. Um, it has a medallion at the um, piston knob and a medallion on the cap top, which I think were um, really sharp looking compared to some of their more modern um, logo imprints. So the spirit of Gaudi would definitely be um, in the top three. Well, I hope I'm not breaking any uh, major rules here, but I did pick a fourth and I'll beg for forgiveness later. Um, the fourth I've chosen is a Pelican 400NN, or as it was known at the time, a Pelican uh, 400. Uh, this is uh, from 57 to 65 vintage, and it really is, you know, as far as classic styling goes, the balance, the, the look to it. Um, this one has a uh, 
14 karat uh, gold nib and medium. The nib is very expressive, they're soft, they're just such a fun uh, joy to write with. Um, and if anybody's looking to get a taste of vintage, this is usually um, one of the directions I point most people. Um, and of course it has Pelican's classic green striped appearance uh, on the barrel, which you know I, I couldn't leave out of this top three. So that is you know my uh, look at Pelican. Uh, my favorites, and I thank Yost for the opportunity, and thank you for watching. I, I hope you enjoyed the pens as much as I do.